Hello! Today's stories come from r slash petty revenge. Today we have four stories, and I have to say, this sub never disappoints. You want to steal my chocolate? Hope you like spending the afternoon on the toilet. This story takes place a few years ago when I was 25. I had a female coworker friend in her 20s, whom we'll refer to as Megan. I chose this name because she pretty much was like Megan from Drake and Josh. Annoying. Always liked to stir up trouble and loved eating food that wasn't hers. One day, I went to my work, looking forward to having some of my imported chocolate with my lunch. Lo and behold, I found out that Megan had taken it during first break and had just eaten it. Now, at the time, we all knew it was Megan doing it, but nobody had any 100% solid proof other than food only going missing on the days she was there. She didn't work full time and she was only in three days a week. Anyway, I decided it was time to make her pay. No one eats my chocolate and gets away with it. That night, I went home and baked some brownies with chocolate chunks in them. The next morning, I brought in two separate baggies. The first contained regular brownies, nothing special about those. I gave those to my coworkers before Megan arrived, and everyone loved them. The second bag was marked with my name and placed with my lunch. What no one else knew was the two brownies in my lunch bag didn't contain normal chocolate chunks. I had instead Place those with chocolate laxative squares, about two or three in each one. The trap was set. Like clockwork, first break came and went. I didn't check if she had taken the brownies, but I didn't have to wait long to find out. Not long after first break, Megan had to frantically leave her desk and nearly sprint to the bathroom. Four desks away, I'm trying not to laugh. She comes back a considerable amount of time later, but before long, she's back up again. This repeated several more times until I'm pretty sure Megan's insides were more or less empty. While she never said anything, I think most people worked out what had happened. The upside is, Megan never stole food at that place again. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Revenge is a dish best served with chocolate, no? (laughs) I'm definitely known for my snacking in the workplace, but I would never, ever take someone's food. I think this is hilarious. Now, on to an anecdote and some wisdom in the comments before our next story. OK Implement had this to share. I had a workmate who used to do this. Had a heap of peanuts in a jar. I watched them helping themselves. Casually mentioned that it is weird they waited for the chocolate to come off. They were like, what do you mean? I replied, they were chocolate-coated peanuts. I sucked all the chocolate off and put the nuts back in the jar. Never ate food that was not theirs again. Special Juice said, this is fantastic. She couldn't report you because then she would have to admit stealing food. Well played. The exalted noob added, the cannot report without incriminating oneself part is the standard. The real genius is handing out non-laxative brownies, which strongly suggests the problem was on Megan's end, pun intended. Plausible deniability against accusations of setting a trap. First Eleven said, except that it can get out and poisoning your coworkers tends to get you fired. Honestly, this is hilarious, but don't do it. Our second story is, Candy Store tries to strong arm me into a purchase I shouldn't have been charged for. I stopped at one of those candy stores inside malls you always see with tons of bins full of random candy and the bags you can fill up yourself with the tongs where you get charged some crazy price by the pound. On this visit, they seemed to be running a special. Next to where the bags were kept to fill up your candy, they had a sign saying free cups to store your candy. So I opted for that instead of the bag, knowing they would still weigh the cup too. When I got to the counter and they weighed the candy, the total came up on the register. But I had to question it, since I may not have heard the price right. It was about double what I was expecting it would be. I asked how much candy they weighed and what the price breakdown was. The two clerks behind the register looked irritated that I had to question them, but gave me the weight and also added that they charged me several dollars for the cheap plastic cup that was supposed to be free. Aren't those cups supposed to be free? I asked. No, they are not free. They're four dollars. There is a big sign saying free cups. No, there isn't. I walk over and point to the sign that said free. Oh, we used to have free cups, but we ran out, so we put jars there instead. Isn't that a bit misleading? No, because these are jars. Wouldn't it be fair to say someone looking at a sign that says free cups and sees a plastic container where the sign is assume that it's a cup? No, because it's not a cup. There is nothing else around the sign, only the containers and a sign that says free. 
No response. I was getting nowhere. Fine. I'll just dump the candy in a bag and you can keep the jar. No, you can't do that because you already touched the jar and we can't sell it to someone else now. They said smugly, expecting my defeat. But I remembered they didn't have my credit card yet. Okay, then just keep the candy too. Bye. They realized they would now need to toss out both the candy and the jar that I had, and the smirks they were trying to hide quickly turned to scowls. I could feel the daggers being stared at me as I walked out. I love candy, but I always feel ripped off at those stores that charge by weight. Kind of like the Froyo places where you quickly regret all the toppings you just piled on. The sad thing is, they probably left the sign up since most people are too embarrassed to walk away. I love that OP just said, Hi. Let's check out the comments for a similar story from another Redditor. Why do Ducks Quack said, For real, I always forget just walk away, do nothing is on the option wheel. Someone else added, I only rarely get to do it, but walking away feels so great. I was in a big new used bookstore recently and they were having a 50% off all paperback sale. They had a bunch of good stuff, so I picked up a few of them to buy. Go to cash out with the owner and they're charging me full price. But these are paperbacks, they're on sale. Those are trade paperbacks, only the mass market paperbacks are on sale. I can see literally a dozen signs while standing right here that all say all paperbacks. When they launched into some philosophical statement about paper thickness, I just left. Someone else said, and we all know darn well they put the candy back in the bins and the jar back on display. Our friendship added, it gets marked as waste to be thrown out and documented. When the manager leaves, you get to eat it. Our third story is probably the mildest and thus most hilariously petty. Don't cut in front of a parent with their child and then ask us to take your photo. We lived in Japan for two fantastic years. And one of the things my kids loved to do was go to Universal Studios Japan, particularly the Sanrio area. The kids can't get enough of Hello Kitty. Apparently, neither can grown adults. Midday at the park, they dress some poor soul as Hello Kitty to come out and greet the horde of fans. That day, there were probably 100 plus people surrounding the mascot. Well, my kids wanted a picture with the huge furry feline, so I sighed, got in the back of the line, and patiently waited. We were finally next in line when a middle-aged woman dressed in cat attire cut in front of my six-year-old and me. We were shocked and didn't immediately react. Was this grown-up seriously cutting in front of a line of children? Then, before I had a chance to say anything, she turned around and asked me to take her picture with Hello Kitty. I could hear a chorus of grumbling behind us. At this point, I was ready to throw her iPhone into the fountain, but I thought for a second, smiled, and agreed. I took multiple pictures in portrait and landscape modes, each time coaching her for the cutest poses. A few people behind us were gleefully watching over my shoulder, as I either put my finger over her face or cut her head off of every single photo. Middle-aged cat lady thanked me and left so she could check the photos away from the crowd. We took our photos with the cat, they turned out great, and as we walked away, we saw the lady angrily scrolling through her photos. The mascot's allotted time was also up about that time, so she didn't have a chance to go back and retake her photos. Someone was telling me just the other day how much they hate when people cut in line. In general, it's a no-no, but budging in front of a bunch of kiddos at a theme park is pretty intolerable. Let's see what others had to say. Dogfish Frostbite said, middle-aged Japanese women going full tilt at theme parks is a real thing, insanely common. I lived in Japan when my daughter was two to six years old. I did my time. It's real. Snoobird said, very petty. Next time, include a selfie. Lil D said, nah, that's evidence. Our last story isn't something I would ever do, because I'm a lady. But everyone seemed to love it, so I had to share. Story is, fart in bed? Me too. My husband has had a horrible habit of farting in bed. Now, this never bothered me before, but anyone who has been pregnant can attest to the super snoot that becomes our nose. Super involved backstory. Two years ago, he let out a nasty fart while I was sick in bed. I immediately had to leave to go throw up. I've been scarred for life and left with some trauma from this fart because it was nasty and the second it hit me, I knew I was done for. I was barely able to walk and still had to run to the bathroom where I proceeded to throw up violently for an hour. Back to reality, it's been two years and I remember this fart. 
Every time my husband farts in bed, I panic and run, interrupting my comfy. After two years of begging him to stop, leave the room, even go to the corner so I don't have to smell butt as I'm trying to sleep. He still thinks it's hilarious. Well, I don't fart in front of people. I've always been too embarrassed to do it, even if I was in a relationship with a person. Today, that changed. I was half asleep when my husband let out a toot. Laying in bed, I flex my stomach and plan my attack. I hear the ripple of my butt cheeks as I think. Screw it. Is he going to divorce me over some gas? Husband shouted, blue-eyed brunette, did you just fart? And he cracks another one. So I crack another one. Husband asks, are we playing battle toots? Before he could say more, in one smooth motion of my hand, I grab the blanket and toss it over his head. He sputters and coughs, shouts my name again in disgust and shock, then accepts defeat and gets up for the day. From now on, I'll have to eat beans and avocado to keep my fart box ready. I think I've won the battle, but not the war. (laughs) Oh, I'm such a sucker for bathroom humor. She really doubled down on giving him a dose of his own medicine. I have to ask, though, will this change the dynamic of their relationship? Let's check out some hilarious comments. No Prophet said, Boiled eggs, broccoli, gas station burritos. Gritty McDuff added, Homicide is still uncalled for. Fun Vanilla added, The word premeditated comes to mind with these. Primary Valuable shared, As a fellow wife to a mega flatulator, I feel your pain. After years, I have him somewhat trained to, at a minimum, lift a cheek or rotate in the opposite direction. It's either that or he gets sprayed, literally, with deodorizing spray. Mama H added, Mega flatulator has me dying. This is my father, and when sharing a hotel room, we have to declare fart-free zones. Primary Valuable replied, And not the bathroom. Like the hallway is good, just don't get caught. And please, for the sake of all life forms, not the elevator. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.